So uh, I've got no presentation. I'm not going to write anything on the board because I'm talking about sound. You can't really draw sound. So yeah. Well, then you can see sound, and it's a totally different thing, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, I'm going to talk about two things: that the th performance sound. So if you're, say, a professional musician and you're doing tours and concerts and that, it's generally amplified sound. And then also session sound, which is what most s what uh, most trad players do, which is just sit in a pub with other like-minded people and play trad. So uh, yeah, so the so the general thing that I've got is I've asked a few fiddle players from Scotland, Ireland, the Isle of Man, Wales, Cornwall, and England. And so the general idea for a performance sound is to have very, very responsive and crisp with a very short decay. Because in classical music, it's usually that you you draw the sound out through the bow, so you get long resonance and it's it's a nice kind of sound. But if you're playing fast reels and jigs and that kind of thing, uh, you want no like instant decay because otherwise it's a muddy sound that it all gets all fuzzy and it's not not excellent. So, and lots of people think that f like folky trad is f like dirty sound that it's all gritty and it's not, but you want a you want a clean sound because from a clean sound you can work whatever kind of sound you want from it. And oh, just saying as well that I have no idea how to set up yet because we do that next year. I have no idea how s how strings work, so I'm literally just telling you what the sound you're after is. I can't tell you how to get that sound. Right. Anyway. So yeah yeah um. So yeah, for the fast faster tunes, which is most of them really, like stress plays, reels, jigs and that and the like of that, you want a um yeah, you want slow uh quick decay and you because you're playing lots of notes in a small amount of time. But if you're playing slow tunes, which is kind of airs, or if you're accompanying two uh songs or say another tune that's slower then then you uh, a good resonance and a long decay is probably better for you um where am i yeah so <coughs> so what you're after is a nice top like warm 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 sound uh yeah not not a shrill sound because most people think of fiddles as being quite shrill, and that if if you're not playing it right, it's it's not a nice sound to listen to. But you want a clear, clear top because once you amplify it, you want to keep its clarity because otherwise it's it's as I said muddy and murky. Um, you want also a strong low end so you fill out the sound. It gives it a lot of power and warmth behind it. And if you don't, it kind of it gets thin and two dimensional, and you don't really want that kind of sound either. But generally, mid, you don't want any of that because it it gets all confused and it's a yeah, it's a horrible sound. Yeah, so that's crap. Uh, yeah, so session sounds. This is different again, and obviously you want to get a bit of both because. Most people aren't just playing performance all the time and they're not playing session all the time. It's usually a bit of both, usually most of one, a little of the other. But yeah, for the session sounds, because you're playing with lots of other people, you don't want to be cutting through everybody because then it's more of a solo thing. But a session, you want to just blend in with people as much as possible because... Yeah, because then you're having a more of a community thing and it's nice that everyone's all together as opposed to just one person bashing it out really loud and obnoxiously. And if you can't if you can't hear the other people, then likely as not you're going to play in the wrong place and it sounds crap. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, uh, one of my friends on the other man was saying that because uh, her fiddle's quite loud, it's not really a session instrument. It's more of a performance thing. Um, so she she says that when she plays, she has to really really think about adding less pressure when playing because otherwise you just ride above everyone else and and the fiddle. It, although it's a, the tune instrument of it. I don't know if you've come down to the sessions, but yeah, the the it, it's the only real tune instrument that's in Newark. Um, there's whistles and that, which are quite shrill. You don't really get unless you get a low D whistle. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, so you still want a good top top end to kind of. You just come out the top of the session every now and again with bits, but at, uh, on the whole, you want more warm, warm low end because, yeah, because you're blending in with everyone, you fill out the whole space, and it's I don't know, a session is a warm place and a nice feel as opposed to because performance, it's it's more of a focused, it's. You're looking at the person. You're more exposed. You can show off a bit more, like. But um, yeah, in a session, you're trying to blend in with as with as much as you possibly can. So a warm bottom end is a good a good thing to have. And once again, the mid you don't want that as much. But because it's not as you're not as focused, it's you can have a bit more mid. It doesn't really matter. It might kind of even out the two ends a little bit better, but that's the that's the kind of thing you're after. Um, but yeah, it's all you you don't want all performance based kind of sound or all session based because if you go to the other one, then you screw it on you. Because if if you got a session based instrument, and you try to play. While it's been amplified, it'd just it'd just be a horrible, low, terrible sound. And if it's a cutting kind of show off, kind of uh, if you get a really good classically set up instrument, you're playing a session, you really notice it because it's it just cuts through everything else, and you can't hear anyone. You just hear the one person, and it's it's not excellent. But it's all down to what you think sounds best as well because so it it could be the greatest setup for for professionally playing or playing in uh amplified but if you think it sounds crap then you're not gonna set it up but uh yeah so basically for a for a performance based one it's kind of a really quick response <coughs> nice bit of top end not a lot of horrible, terrible mid, and then you want a strong bottom end, but not loads. But then, for a session instrument, Drew's instrument that he made last year, his Breschen, is a perfect, perfect session instrument. Yeah. Because it's nice bit of top, no mid, and just the warmest, mellowest, most amazing bottom end I've ever seen on an instrument. No, I don't have six and a half. Six and a half hundred? No, no, okay. But yeah, so clear, clear top, kind of mid to top, nice clear, little, little mid as possible, strong, warm bottom that fills out all the sound, and that's a trad fiddle, I suppose. Any questions? Six grand? <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness. Um, so do you find... <laughs> Hello. Yes. Um, so, trad players, have you found there's actually any kind of a move that's inside my beard right now, which is kind of uncomfortable? 
Is there any kind of movement then more towards uh, a modern electric instrument rather than? There are a couple of bands that use electric instruments. Um, One String Loose and Three Blind Monkeys are, are people who use both electric guitars, drum kit, fiddles. Mm. Um, th- you can also get plug-in pipes, which are electric pipes, which yeah. sound weird yeah. and terrible. Well, I, don't, I don't really like them. But uh, yeah, there are some, but not many people go for it. They go for amplified uh, trad instruments, um, like acoustic instruments, but not really as a whole. Excellent sound. Because I don't like making electric. Well, yeah, your your instruments are perfect session instruments because they because everyone else, most most other instruments, because you make them for the classical market because there's there's no market at all for folky instruments because folkies are poor as fuck <laughs> and put it like this they just the they have no money but classical people obviously do because uh hello um i'm wondering about the playability of the instrument uh, I'm, I'm sure you've tried uh quite a lot of uh a newly set up instrument from school, which is more of a high performing classical setup, I guess. Um, do you have any thoughts about lower string heights or uh, different radius bridges or, or something along those lines? Because uh, we ha- I have I have no idea on setup really. I just know that if you get quite a close action then it's easier to play faster tunes because you don't have to press down as hard. You can move your fingers faster because you don't have to press down as far. But if you get too low in action, then I've what I've found is generally for a trad instrument, people like a low action but not too low because, I don't know, it sounds weird. I don't know why it sounds weird, but nobody likes that. And also something that, I totally forgot about it until now, but when you play in a trad style, you only use the top maybe third half of your bow. So lot a few players use shorter bows, so they use um, a th- uh, th- three-quarters cello bow. There's a fella in England, really top fiddler, who used the shorter bow because and a slightly heavier bow because it gives you more what it makes a difference yeah it ju- it just gives it a little bit more power <laughs> what the fuck was that <laughs> use the mic for the question otherwise we won't hear you in the recording please Okay, I just said that if you use um, even a three-quarter syllable, it makes 10 grams a difference for, uh, like, it's the difference for a violin bow. That actually hurts your arm, especially if you're playing in that part of the bow. But uh, I was thinking about maybe you can use um, um, less tension on the hair of the bow, and that will help getting that sound that you want. Not sure about it? No, you want quite a good amount of tension but uh-huh. because yeah well because you only use it you never use the bottom half the bow really unless you're playing a slow air or so all that kind of thing feeds into the slower tunes so it's not really the same setup i'd say when you use the whole bow but usually you only use the first the top half of the bow which is also why if you look at most or lots of trad players they only rosin the top half of the bow because that's the only part they use but then a slightly heavier bow i i don't know it, it just gives it a bit more because you're only using that much of the bow slightly heavier bow makes it work i don't really yeah that's probably about the balance of the bow not that it's more heavier i don't know heavier. yeah well <laughs> that's what i've found uh, of the few people have asked they quite they quite like a heavier bow 
and some people are short of O, but it doesn't really. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. Sad. I know how far. No. I know you say that um, you don't know about strings, but what do you personally use? I use dominance, yeah, but Parastro, uh, there's some other one that some that they use. What? Donica. Donica. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I know that lots of people use a different E string uh, from the rest of them because it kind of. I don't know, for some reason. I don't know the answer to that question. I just, yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Is that okay? Right, well, thank you very much.